Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new episode of WCW Saturday Night. We are here live in the Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. And let me tell you right now, folks, this place is going absolutely bananas. It is absolutely deafening in this building, folks. We had to get a new venue because the studio in Atlanta was stacked from head to toe. So here we are, folks. We are in Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, and they're getting a treat tonight, folks. Let me tell you right now, because starting off, we will begin with the Cruiserweight Tournament with Rey Mysterio and Psychosis. Billy Kidman and Dean Malenko are our second Cruiserweight match for tonight. That is later on in the show. We also have Chris Benoit going against Buff Bagwell. Benoit earned himself the number one contendership by having multiple wins and earning a spot for the U.S. Championship. And folks, we also have Bret Hart and a partner of his choosing going against Ric Flair and Arn Anderson, folks. The four horsemen are in action tonight for the first time in universe mode. Here we are, folks, getting things kicked off with our cruiserweights, beginning with Psychosis, folks. Psychosis, another cruiserweight that came through the ranks of ECW a man that has multiple rivals here. He's went against Eddie Guerrero. He's went against Rey Mysterio, Chris Jericho, moving to Guerrero, you name it. Psychosis, another dangerous competitor and another threat to this cruiserweight tournament. And boy, I can tell you right now, him and Mysterio are going to bring down the house tonight. That is a guarantee. Here is Psychosis, folks, awaiting Rey Mysterio Jr., these two men have done battle so many times over the course of their careers against one another. And here is Ray Mysterio Jr., folks. He is in Freedom Hall, ladies and gentlemen. Ray Mysterio was in our first episode of WCW Universe Mode. Went head-to-head -head with Randy Savage, but did not pick up the victory. Savage was able to pick up a win over Mysterio, but do not get it twisted, folks. Ray Mysterio took Randy Savage to the limit and Rey, and Rey Mysterio and Dean Malenko are two of the men that I'm hearing rumors about being the favorites for this tournament. Definitely would not be a shame to see those two finish out our tournament at Spring Stampede. And Rey Mysterio Jr. has his game face on, ladies and gentlemen. Him and Psychosis know each other so well, and these fans are ready to see these men go head to head. And here we go. Here is our first match for Saturday night. Rey Mysterio and Hurricane Rana to get us kicked off. Who would have ever guessed that this match would have begun with a Hurricane Rana? These two men are the top high flyers, two of the top high flyers in WCW. Rey Mysterio, maybe the, the best, but nonetheless. Oh, and here we go. Rey Mysterio going up top. Did not take long for Mysterio to go up top. Misses with the leg drop. Psychosis not able to connect with that kick to Mysterio. And Mysterio takes advantage. Northern Lights suplex into the cover. One kick out from Psychosis at one. Ray Mysterio and Psychosis will give us a ton of aerial maneuvers here into this match. Already seen a top rope from Mysterio that did not connect. But a kick to the back and another kick to the back from Mysterio. Working on the low back in that kidney section goes Rey Mysterio. And folks, on Monday we will see DDP and Randy Savage in an interview that will be conducted by Eric Bischoff. Do not miss it, folks. It will be something to behold. And another springboard from Rey Mysterio. Springboard into the Frankensteiner. Hurricane Rana on the outside. And we are on the outside now, folks. Did not take long. Psychosis is dazed and confused from that Hurricane Rana. Here we go, oh, and what a move from Psychosis. Brain buster from Psychosis, and now Psychosis is in control on the attack with a number of chops, and Rey Mysterio throws him in to the ring post, and Psychosis is out again. Boy, these two are going, about to take each other's head off here. Early on, folks, you knew this was going to get heated. These two have a lot of history. And Rey Mysterio goes back to the lower back area of Psychosis. Knee to the low back now. Rey Mysterio picking apart the low back of Psychosis. What a smart strategy from Mysterio. 
Mysterio going to get back in, maybe break that count. Yes, he will. And Psychosis with a slap from Rey Mysterio, hooks the arms. And Rey Mysterio is on the attack now. And back to the low back hip area of Psychosis, maybe taking out the low base, able to take away the power from springboards. That will take away a lot of offense from Hooven to, or from, I'm sorry, from Psychosis. There's a chop. Oh, and a Frankensteiner from Psychosis. Might have got it all wrong, folks. I said Rey Mysterio is going to take away the power, but Psychosis was able to connect a Frankensteiner with ease there on the outside, and we come back into the ring. Psychosis wants to get this business done in the ring. Irish whip into the turnbuckle, goes Psychosis, and what is he looking for now? Uh-oh, will we see a Frankensteiner from the top rope? Psychosis with a Frankensteiner from the top rope. That will be an easy win there if they can get this. And a two count from Ray Mysterio. Boy, Hooven, I'm sorry, Psychosis did not take him long to get that cover. And he goes back up top with a leg drop from Psychosis. Good grief, what a leg drop. And a two count again. Ray Mysterio able to stay in the fight. Kick to the back from Psychosis. Misses with that leg drop. Ray Mysterio able to get out of that leg drop. Reversal there. Irish whip from Psychosis. What is he looking to set up here on Mysterio? Leapfrog into an arm drag. There is an arm drag from Psychosis, and Rey Mysterio looking to get a breather on the outside. I don't think Psychosis is going to allow that. Oh, and Mysterio able to bait Psychosis into that. Hurricane Rana, springboard Hurricane Rana from Mysterio, and Mysterio is back in control, and here he goes to the top rope, calling for Psychosis to get up. What is Rey Mysterio looking for here? Another into a Hurricane Rana. Gets the cover one and a two. And that is it, folks. Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio Jr. is able to pick up the win here in our first match. And he will advance in the Cruiserweight Tournament. But, folks, nonetheless, what a match from these two Cruiserweight high flying superstars here in WCW. Man, that was something to watch. And what a match from these two competitors. Man, do not take away from the quality of this match, folks. These two men knew each other like the back of their hand, but Rey Mysterio was able to get those legs hooked and it did not take long, but he will advance in this tournament, folks. He will meet Chris Jericho. And man, what a match that will be on Nitro. That tournament will continue on tonight, but ladies and gentlemen, here's Booker T. Booker T is in the main event tonight, and there's Scott Steiner, his opponent. We will see the Steiners and the Harlem Heat go at it tonight in our main event. In two weeks, we will have our first pay-per-view here in WCW Universe Mode. It is Spring Stampede. These superstars will collide for the belts here in Charlotte, North Carolina in Independence Arena, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You do not want to miss it, folks. It is Spring Stampede.
Welcome back to Freedom Hall, ladies and gentlemen. We are back in Louisville, Kentucky. We will see Buff Bagwell in action going against Chris Benoit. And what you've seen earlier, folks, was Scott Steiner and Booker T giving each other some words. Those two, those two guys know what is at stake for their team tonight, both with a chance to face the Outsiders at Spring Stampede for the Tag Team Championship belts but that will be later on in our show folks for our main event but right now we have buff bagwell and chris benoit buff bagwell was set to face sting in our last episode of saturday night but it was canceled due to sid vicious attacking sting and that made sting unable to compete but nonetheless here is buff bagwell kid's a hell of an athlete showing off his crazy physique folks you will see him do that every single time he comes to the ring but you got to give him credit, folks. He's got a hell of a physique, but that does not guarantee him anything in WCW. As a matter of fact, Crispin Wall might have something to say about that. Crispin Wall is our number one contender at Spring Stampede for the U.S. Championship against Kurt Henning, and that will take place next Sunday. But, man, what a match we have set here. We have Buff Bagwell and Chris Wall, two young cats here in WCW. You couldn't ask for a better match here for our second show for our second match on our second show of Saturday night. Bagwell and Ben Wall will give this crowd one hell of a show. I have no doubt about it. Bagwell, I'm interested to see him compete and get his first few minutes in the ring. But Ben Wall, man, he is going to make that difficult for Bagwell. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Ben Wall is 1-0. I believe he beat Dean Malenko on uh, the first episode of Saturday Night last week. So Ben Wall has actually got a pretty good resume and got a very good victory. Dean Malenko being one of our top dudes here, especially Matt Wrestlers here in WCW. But Ben Wall was able to overcome it and get the victory over Malenko. But Ben Wall, it'll be a very, very interesting to see these two young guys get in the ring toe-to-toe. And I know these fans are damn sure excited for it. Nonetheless, folks, here we go. Ben Wall and Buff Bagwell going at it toe-to-toe -to -toe here in Louisville, Kentucky. Buff Bagwell on the attack there with the Lariat. Early clothesline from Buff Bagwell. Boy, that scrambled Crispin Wall's eggs there. That scrambled his brains a little bit. And here we go. Gets out of that hold from Buff Bagwell. Shot to the back. Oh, and here we go. Early, early chokehold from Crispin Wall. Early chokehold from Crispin Wall. This might do it. Holy cow, what a finish that would be. And Buff Bagwell. Buff Bagwell able to to get out of that rear naked choke. And here he goes with a Northern Light suplex. One, no, kick out from Ben Wall at a one count. And here goes Buff Bagwell with the offense. Boy, he came out of the gate strong just with an early lariat. But man, he about got choked out early. And Ben Wall able to counter out of that. Slams Buff Bagwell gut first into that match. Ben Wall, and here he goes with another rear naked choke. Ben Wall with a second rear naked choke. The arm pinned behind the back. Good grief, what a finish this would be. No, Buff Bagwell able to use the same tactic as before. Gets out of it just in the nick of time before he's able to get it clinched in too much. And here we go, folks. On to the outside. Did not take long. Elbow to the, to the face there, Ben Wall. And boy, Buff Bagwell not intimidated by... Chris Benoit at all. As a matter of fact, he took the fight to Benoit early, and there is a German suplex to the outside. Buff Bagwell making an impression early and making an early statement. Another elbow there to the face of Benoit, and boy, Buff Bagwell making an impression early. Chris Benoit able to get himself a breather. Man, he was getting absolutely worked on the outside. Back in the ring we go. And Chris Benoit gets countered, going for that punch, but Buff Bagwell was able to stop it just in the nick of time. Big back body drop into a pin goes Bagwell. 
Chris Benoit getting the shoulder up at a one count. Buff Bagwell is going to need to do more damage than that. As a DDT there from Buff Bagwell. Boy, Chris Benoit needs to find offense, and he needs to find it quick. Maybe get something going here. Oh, and a, no, German suplex, no. Buff Bagwell countered the German suplex from Chris Benoit. And he's looking for a belly to belly. Chris Benoit able to get out of that. And these two have, have an answer for each other. And there's a gut wrench slam there from Chris Benoit goes into a cover. He needs to do some more damage if he's looking to get the win. These two guys going for a pin early. And there's an elbow to the head of Bagwell. And there's a there's some punches from Chris Benoit. Maybe looking to weaken Buff Bagwell. Buff Bagwell with a leg sweep there into a leg drop. Buff Bagwell with a leg drop. And good grief, these two guys, are, they have an answer for one another. Anything they throw at each other, they come back with something different. And boy, these two go out to the outside one more time in this match early on. A couple of elbows to the face of Ben Wall and Bagwell with a kick to the gut and he is looking to maybe get a breather. Maybe get something restarted here. Drop kick, nothing. Not able to get Ben Wall down. And there's a European uppercut from Bagwell. Some more offense from Buff Bagwell. Maybe looking to stretch that low back. Kick to the knee from Bagwell. And here's another reversal from Ben Wall. Oh, and here is that German suplex. Chris Ben Wall's trademark. German suplex. Will we see a third? Yes, we will. Third German suplex. That is Crispin Wall's bread and butter, and he goes back into the pin. That might have weakened Bagwell a little bit. One, two, and no. Bagwell able to kick out at two, but man, that might have scrambled Bagwell a little bit. That is Ben Wall's bread and butter. There is no denying that. Kick to the gut, and now a kick to the back from Ben Wall. If you allow Crispin Wall to get one or two of those German suplexes in. He will definitely make sure that he has the advantage. We can see a cross face from Ben Wall. Will Bagwell tap? Will Bagwell tap? And he will. Buff Bagwell taps at the cross face and Chris Ben Wall able to get a victory over Buff Bagwell. <laughs> These two guys actually gave a hell of a run against one another. But man, Ben Wall able to slap on that cross face. And when he does, it is almost just about over if you are not within distance of those ropes. It is pretty much over. Look at him stretch that the neck area of Bagwell. And man, that has to absolutely hurt like hell, putting that much stress on the neck area. And man, Ben Wall making a statement with that win. That is your US championship. Number one contender folks, Kurt Henning better be watching. Take a note somewhere because Ben Wall is looking damn sharp in the ring. There's no doubt about it. What a win from Ben Wall. And last week, folks, we saw on Saturday night, we saw uh, Sid Vicious attack Sting. And here's a couple of shots from last week. Sting was out like a light, folks. He took that powerbomb onto the concrete. But man, there has got to be something going on with Sting. Later on, folks, up next, we will see Billy Kidman and Dean Malenko going head to head with our second match of the Cruiserweight Tournament. In two weeks, we will have our first pay-per-view here in WCW Universe Mode. It is Spring Stampede. These superstars will collide for the belts here in Charlotte, North Carolina in Independence Arena, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You do not want to miss it, folks. It is Spring Stampede. Welcome back to WCW Saturday Night, folks. We are in Louisville, Kentucky, setting up our second Cruiserweight Championship match. This will set up the semifinals of the tournament. Billy Kidman and Dean Malenko looking for a chance to face Eddie Guerrero in the semifinals in the Final Four. And Billy Kidman, our first chance seeing him going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a competitor here in the universe mode. And not a very good choice for his first opponent, Dean Malenko. But that 
It's just the way the tournament was set up. But, man, Billy Kidman has a chance to really turn some heads here if he can get a win over Dean Malenko, the man of a 1,000 holds. And he, he earns the name. He definitely earns the name. There's no doubt about it. Dean Malenko took the fight to Crispin Wall last week but did not come out on top. But, man, Dean Malenko really has a good chance to gain a lot of momentum if he can get a pinfall tonight and run through this tournament. He will have to face Eddie Guerrero. Whoever wins this match will face Eddie Guerrero, like I mentioned earlier. But, man, facing Jericho or Mysterio, that's going to be a tough, tough task to handle for Malenko or Kidman here. But nonetheless, folks, here is Dean Malenko, the man of a 1,000 holds. Held the Cruiserweight Championship multiple times on multiple occasions. And as I've mentioned earlier, multiple times as well, another Cruiserweight that came through the ranks of ECW. Dean Malenko came through ECW just like Jericho, just like Eddie Guerrero, just like Juventud Guerrera, just like Rey Mysterio, and Psychosis, as I mentioned earlier. Every single cruiserweight in WCW have came through the ranks of ECW. And man, you have to give a lot of thanks to Paul Heyman. Eric Bischoff better give a lot of thanks to Paul Heyman because he has basically like handpicked these guys and gave them a name in ECW. And that is basically the entire cruiserweight division here in, in WCW. So, man, Eric Bischoff better thank Paul Heyman because that is damn sure been the path for these cruiserweights. And that is where they got their name. And that is where they got a lot of eyes on them. And, man, this cruiserweight division has a lot of potential. There is no freaking doubt about it. That man right there could lead the way for the Cruiserweights. But here we go, folks. Dean Malenko and Billy Kidman looking to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And I see Billy Kidman as the underdog. But, man, just because you're the underdog does not mean you cannot pick up the victory on any given night. But Billy Kidman will damn sure have his hands full with this man right here, Dean Malenko. This crowd knows that they are in for a treat, though. These these two guys have a chance to, to top uh, Rey Mysterio and Psychosis match earlier. But, man, it will be tough to do. But here we go, folks. Dean Malenko locking up with Kidman. There's already a DDT there from Malenko. Did not take long for him to throw in that DDT. And now just throws the head, throws Billy Kidman's head into the mat. And what is he looking for here? Just toying with Kidman a little bit. Oh, and Kidman able to get out of whatever Malenko was looking for there. Irish whip, drop kick from Billy Kidman. What a well-timed drop kick from Kidman. And now we see him stomp on the arm of Dean Malenko. Don't let this kid get a lot of confidence because he has a chance to really bring up the upset if he could get some momentum here and get some confidence into a springboard crossbody from Billy Kidman. And there he goes. He's getting confident. You can see it in his body language here. Punches to the head of Malenko. And Malenko better do something quick because Kidman is getting more and more momentum. And you can just see the confidence grow in each and every move he makes. Power slam there from Kidman into the cover one. Dean Malenko able to kick out at one and smartly rolls out of the ring and baits Kidman in and wait a minute Kidman able to block off that chop that would have really set up an advantage for Dean Malenko if he could have baited Kidman and came out successful but no Kidman able to respond and we see a knee drop from Kidman and now two or three kicks to the head there kicks to the body and a kick no oh and what a move from Kidman thought he was going for the kick to the head to top off the previous kicks and there's a knee drop Knee drop on the outside from Kidman. Boy, and Dean Malenko better get something going because he is getting the fight brought to him right now. Kidman with the face buster. Boy, Kidman, what a surprising start from Kidman. Billy Kidman breaking that count. Oh, and what a move from Kidman. Another big move from Kidman, a slam into the mat, and now a kick to the back. Boy, Malenko is getting worked here, ladies and gentlemen. 
I think this crowd is on the side of Kidman. I mean, how could you not be? The kid is absolutely un the underdog in this tournament, and he is bringing it to the top guy here in Malenko. Looking to throw him into those steps there. And boy, we better get this thing back into the inside of the ring because there might be a count out. We do not want to see this match end in a count out, folks. In a tournament like this, you want to see every single match go to the final bell until there's somebody submits or there's somebody that passes out or if there's somebody that gets pinned on the mat. You don't want to see a count out and there's a missed elbow, maybe a bad move from Kidman and now Malenko able to bait him in and we see a vertical suplex from Dean Malenko. Boy, you cannot deny the ring smart of Dean Malenko. He is very intelligent in the ring, folks. He knows how to pick people apart. He knows how to bait people in. He has very, very smart strategies in that ring, and now he is going to work on Kidman. And boy, those rapid punches to the head. And now he gives a knee drop to Kidman. Wait a minute, Kidman. Able to get out of that with a kick to the head. Wait a minute, what is this? No, looking for a Hurricane Rana. And there's a European uppercut. What a smart reversal into a cover. And just a one count. Boy, that was a hell of a reversal there into that European uppercut. Who in the hell could have ever imagined that you could turn a powerbomb looking maneuver into a European uppercut? And we see the arms hook there into a little butterfly slam there. Boy, that might have took Kidman out. That looked like that hurt like hell. Nadal Malenko able to slap on the Texas Cloverleaf. And here is the Cloverleaf from Malenko, his patented finisher, his submission hold that he goes to every single match. Will Kidman tap? Will Kidman tap out to the, Cle the Cloverleaf here? Boy, he's had that thing on for quite a while there. And Kidman able to battle out. Very good resilience there from Kidman. Able to get out of the very, very tough cloverleaf there that not many opponents can get out of. And there's another German suplex from Dean Malenko into that bottom turnbuckle. Did Kidman's head go? And there's a kick to the leg from Malenko. And boy, Kidman, that seemed to hurt him a lot. But no, he gets out of whatever Malenko was looking for next. Oh, and what a kick to the head from Billy Kidman. Good grief, that definitely rocked Malenko. Boy, that was a hell of a kick. And there's the hurricane run of the Frankensteiner that Dean or that Billy Kidman was looking for earlier. Able to connect it this time. And Billy Kidman, what is he looking for here? Another power slam. I'm very impressed with Billy Kidman this far in this match. Looking for another aerial move here. Aerial attack. Top rope, looking for the shooting star press, but no connection there. Belinko moves out of the way, slams the head of Billy Kidman, rocking the brain of Billy Kidman here, backs up into that turnbuckle. What is Belinko looking for here? German suplex into the turnbuckle. Did Dean Malenko go, and here he goes back into the Texas Cloverleaf. This might do it. Billy Kidman's close to the ropes. Will he get that rope? No, he was not able to get the bottom rope, and he taps out to the Texas Cloverleaf. Very, very great showing from Billy Kidman. Very impressed, but Dean Malenko able to show the experience there and able to top Billy Kidman. And we saw that that butterfly slam there and a miss. Shooting star press. Dean Malenko showing his experience, but I definitely think he got out wrestled in that match. But Billy Kidman. Looking very impressive. Very good showing from Billy Kidman, but just not enough to get the win tonight. And Dean Malenko will advance. And we will see Dean Malenko and Eddie Guerrero go toe-to-toe -to -toe on Nitro. This tournament is really shaping up to be a very, very great finish, folks.
Goldberg. The chants are just rocking Freedom Hall tonight, folks. Goldberg. Wait a minute. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan is attacking Eddie Guerrero. Oh, my gosh. We did not know that Hulk Hogan was here in Freedom Hall. No one knew that the NWO was here. And Eddie Guerrero is getting absolutely destroyed backstage by Hulk Hogan. What in the world is Hulk Hogan doing here? This is a battle that Eddie Guerrero will not be able to win on his own. We saw him get into it with the NWO last week and call them out, and he is paying the price tonight. Holy cow, we did not know that Hulk Hogan was in Louisville tonight, folks. Eddie Guerrero is in deep, deep trouble. Folks, in a chair shot from Hulk Hogan. Oh my gosh, Eddie Guerrero is gonna need some help. He is bleeding profusely here, folks. Oh my gosh. In two weeks, we will have our first pay-per-view here in WCW Universe Mode. It is Spring Stampede. These superstars will collide for the belts here in Charlotte, North Carolina in Independence Arena, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You do not want to miss it, folks. It is Spring Stampede. We're back here live in Louisville, folks. As you can see, there's tons of chaos going on here in WCW World Championship Wrestling. Eddie Guerrero getting attacked by Hulk Hogan just moments ago. And the Four Horsemen giving their two cents on Bret Hart. And that whole scenario going on with Ric Flair and Bret Hart. But, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We are two here in some tag team action on some two-on-two -two action here. We got the Four Horsemen, Ric Flair, and Arn Anderson going against Bret Hart. And a partner of Bret Hart's choosing. Man, it will be interesting to see who the hitman will choose for his partner. But, man, knowing Bret Hart, he has so many ties here in professional wrestling. You just know, you don't know who in the world Bret Hart could bring out here. It could be absolutely anybody, folks. But we are just moments away from finding out who that competitor is that Bret Hart has and who he has up his sleeve here to go against Ric Flair and Arn Anderson. Boy, what a pop here for the Hitman. Brett, the Hitman Hart is here in Louisville, folks. Your WCW World Heavyweight Champion, Brett, the Hitman Hart. The gold sure does look good on Brett Hart, ladies and gentlemen. You just know this man takes so much pride in being a champion here. In whatever company he is but thank god it's world championship wrestling folks because bret hart is always going to be willing to put any company on his back folks he is going to defend that title with so much pride he takes a ton of honor in that championship folks any type of gold bret hart absolutely takes so much pleasure in being a champion here we are folks we are about to find out who bret hart has chose for his partner here tonight in this tag team matchup
Oh, man, who could it be? These fans are ready to find out. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, flying Brian Pillman. Bret Hart has chosen Brian Pillman as his partner, folks. We have seen these two in a faction in the past. They were at the Hart Foundation at one point. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Pillman is here in Louisville, Kentucky. Once trained in the Hart Dungeon with Stu Hart and Bret Hart and many of the Hart's, Owen, you name it. He has chosen Brian Pillman to be his partner, folks. And man, these two have quite the chemistry, folks. Brian Pillman is one of the most athletic competitors we have seen in World Championship Wrestling. And man, what a debut here for Brian Pillman. This crowd is stunned, ladies and gentlemen. This crowd is on their feet. They are on their feet for Brian Pillman. Bret Hart said that he had tons of Tons of ties here in professional wrestling. He had so many relationships with with so many competitors, so many friendships over the years. And man, what an option he has chosen tonight. Brian Pillman is a huge pick here for Bret Hart. And Ric Flair cannot believe that Brian Pillman is back in World Championship Wrestling. Like I said, what a debut for Mr. Brian Pillman. Owen Arn Anderson getting a hold of Bret Hart and the Snake Eyes in the corner. Well, Ric Flair got out of there in a hurry, folks. He got out of Dodge whenever he saw he was having to lock up with the Hitman. Maybe Ric Flair's wanting to save all his energy for... Oh, Spring Stampede. Oh, a knee to the face from Bret Hart. Boy, it's hard to get the advantage over Bret the Hitman Hart as Arn Anderson is finding that out the hard way right now. Double A, Arn Anderson gets sent into the corner. Will we see Brian Pillman here? Yes, we will. Brian Pillman making his first appearance here in World Championship Wrestling. He goes up to the middle rope. What is he going to get? Elbow across the freaking throat of Arn Anderson. Bret Hart and Brian Pillman showing that chemistry that they have established for many years. Variation of the figure four leg lock here. Oh, Arn Anderson is trapped. Oh, my gosh. What a... What a maneuver here by Brian Pillman going at the knee of Arn Anderson and a couple blows to the face. These, these fans are ready to see the, the very high octane offense of Brian Pillman. Boy, he is something special whenever he gets, gets going, folks. He is a man. He is a loose cannon, as they like to call him. He is all over the place, but... Maybe he wants to see Bret Hart maybe take over this match and get his team the early advantage here. Bret Hart with another kick to the back. We saw that earlier in the match. Going for an early cover. No, one count from, from Arn Anderson. And, Bre and Ric Flair going up to the top rope for some unknown reason. Don't know what that was about. Maybe he was thinking of sneaking in an elbow, flying elbow there. Oh, and Arn Anderson gets... The upper hand kick to the back of Bret Hart, and Bret Hart needs to recover quick. And now Ric Flair just playing possum here with Bret Hart, get, trying to get into the head of the hitman. Oh, he's got that knee, knee drop there from Ric Flair. And Bret Hart going at Arn Anderson, don't know what that's about, but it really cost him there. Oh, Ric Flair sends him in the corner. Clothesline from Ric Flair, and he's crawling to make a tag, but he's not able to get there in time. And now Ric Flair's going to work on the arm. Knee across the arm of Bret Hart. If Ric Flair was smart right here to take out the low base of the hitman, would be a very smart move right now for the four horsemen. Oh, and now they're just going to work on Bret Hart's arm here. Maybe a smart tactic here from the four horsemen. Arn Anderson was looking to make another tag. Oh, and he sends Bret Hart. 
Bret Hart was thinking, pile driver there, I believe, folks, but Arn Anderson's able to think one step ahead and get out of that. Oh, that that pile driver, but man, what a spine buster by double A. One, two, no. Brian Pillman was there to break it up, but I think Bret Hart was able to kick out anyway. The resiliency of Bret Hart after that spine buster, man. We all know double A Arn Anderson is one of the best spine busters in professional wrestling, but Bret Hart thinking one step ahead. Oh, and a backbreaker there from Bret Hart. Arn Anderson going to crawl over and tag in Nate. Oh, here we go. Brian Pillman and Nate going at it now. Both men are fresh. Here's Brian Pillman with a diving cross body here. Oh, and a flying close on that time for Mr. Pillman. Boy, Brian Pillman looks great, folks. He is showing. He is showing that speed that he possesses and that explosiveness in the ring. And there's a flying hill kick there from Brian Pillman. And he gets into the cover and Arn Anderson taking out the ref and breaking up the count at the same time. Referee is down. Well, we've seen a lot of tags here so far in this tag team matchup. We've seen both teams being very smart, working in and out. Very smart tactic. And there's Double A. Speaking of smart tactics, there he is throwing Brian Pillman off the top rope. And now Nature Boy has the advantage. Kitchen sink across the gut of Brian Pillman. What is Rick Flair thinking here? Rake the eyes. Brian Pillman able to dodge, and there's a flying close on once again from Brian Pillman. I want to elbow across the arm. We saw that earlier from Nature Boy doing the same thing to Bret Hart. Maybe Brian Pillman trying to get a little redemption here. Now he's going to wrench the arm a little bit and get, oh, that arm in trouble. Very strange maneuver there from Braun Pillman. Now he is looking to make that tag. Again, like I said, folks, the tactics here in the tag team match makes a huge difference. Working in and out gives your team the advantage. And here we go, folks. Here is the sharpshooter. Sharpshooter from Bret Hart. Oh, my goodness. Ric Flair. Ric Flair. No. Arn Anderson gets there just in time. I think Nature Boy was thinking about tapping out there. Boy, that was... A very, very odd time throwing the sharpshooter, and it caught Nature Boy off guard. And now Nature Boy got out of it very quickly, and he is going to work now on the Hitman. Well, I cannot wait to see these two go at it. Spring Stampede, it is going to be something special, folks. Both men have always been known as being a world champion here in professional wrestling, and my gosh, what a match we are going to see at Spring Stampede. And Bret Hart unable to time that Irish whip. Oh, and there's a backbreaker. Doesn't matter. Bret Hart's able to take advantage. And here he goes tagging in Brian Pillman again. And we see a tag by both sides. And now Brian Pillman and Arn Anderson going at it. Flying crossbody from Brian Pillman. We saw it already in this matchup. Looking for the elbow. But Mr. Double A Arn Anderson is able to counter just in the nick of time. Boy, Arn Anderson is crawling for recovery over there in that corner. Oh, he looks, he looked juiced, but maybe he was playing a little bit of possum against Brian Pillman here. Oh, a belly to belly suplex from Arn Anderson. What a belly to belly. Boy, that'll just take the air out of your lungs if you're Brian Pillman. That, all that weight of Arn Anderson coming across the chest of Pillman. And boy, that will take the wind out of your sails, folks. Nature Boy down on the outside. He might be out of it as well, folks. That sharpshooter might have put a little pain on the low back of Ric Flair. We know he has back problems. He's had a number of back injuries in professional wrestling. That is one key factor to look for at Spring Stampede. That sharpshooter can absolutely take the Nature Boy out of the game real quick. We know about the back pain that Ric Flair is under. Boy, what an elbow there from Double A. Arn Anderson catching. Bret Hart off guard, and maybe he's looking for another belly to belly, but Bret Hart able to get out of it, and there is a sit-out close on from the hitman. Looking for a cover. Ric Flair's down. One, two. Oh, and there's Nate right there. Nate able to break the count, and boy, Bret Hart is flustered. Oh, and here he goes again, folks, looking for another sharpshooter. Sharpshooter and Arn Anderson. He's had it twice on both men. 
Oh, and Arn Anderson able to get out of it quick, not even allowing Bret Hart to sit down on the low back of double A. Oh, and a knee buster there. Or gut buster, I'm sorry. Woo! Oh, and here is the here is the matchup we wanted to see, folks. These two men finally lock up once again, and we see a sharpshooter out of nowhere. Sharpshooter by Ric Flair. Oh, Bret Hart able to turn the tables, able to reverse the pressure on Nate. And Ric Flair actually thought that he might have caught the Hitman off guard there, and I think he did. Northern Light Suplex from the Hitman. One, two, no. Ric Flair able to kick out just in time before the three. And Bret Hart going at Arn Anderson, not a smart move. And here is here is a sleeper hold by the by Nature Boy. Oh my goodness, he he makes the champ pass out. Bret Hart is passed out, folks, and the four horsemen has taken this tag team match. Holy cow. Ric Flair has gotten the best of Bret Hart. And Bret Hart has he has now lost his second match here in WCW. Thanks to the sleeper hold from Ric Flair. Not a smart move by Bret to be distracted by Arn Anderson, but he did, and it cost him the match. Wow, what a surprising victory here from the four horsemen, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very strange way of winning this matchup, but boy, they have proven a point tonight, folks, and Ric Flair and Arn Anderson come out on top here on WCW Saturday night. And these fans are not too keen of that. And here we go, folks. The main event, the Harlem Heat and the Steiner Brothers. Getting ready for action, weeks, folks. We will have our first pay-per-view here in WCW Universe Mode. It is Spring Stampede. These superstars will collide for the belts here in Charlotte, North Carolina, in Independence Arena, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You do not want to miss it, folks. It is Spring Stampede. We are back in Louisville, folks, in Freedom Hall. And here we go, folks. Main event action. We have the Harlem Heat going against the Steiner Brothers. Number one contender spot on the line at Spring Stampede against the Outsiders. Big time matchup here tonight, folks. Steiner Brothers are undefeated this far. Defeated the Nasty Boys last week on Spring Stampede. And, boy, this is a big time jump here, folks. Going from the Nasty Boys to the Harlem Heat. You got two different variations of styles and tag team wrestling. And boy, the Steiner Brothers got to be one of the only tag teams in professional wrestling that could make that jump in certain styles of tag team wrestling. You got the slow pace of the Nasty Boys, the hard hitting action. And now tonight you got the fast pace, hard hitting action as well from the Harlem Heat. But boy, the Steiner Brothers look more than ready. Scott Steiner and Rick Steiner are absolutely ready to go. And boy, they better be because the Harlem Heat are going to bring every single thing they got. Harlem Heat are one intimidating tag team to say the least. Boy, Booker T and Stevie Ray, they even got their game faces on tonight, folks. This is going to be a classic. This is going to be a banger of a main event, folks. I just know Booker T and Stevie Ray do not appreciate the loss they took against the Outsiders on the first episode of Nitro. Back in action tonight, folks, looking for redemption and looking to get that rematch that they think that they deserve against the Outsiders. Boy, the gold sure will look good on either one of these tag teams, but it is going to be hard to get it off the waist of the NWO. Boy, this crowd is excited, and so am I. This is going to be one of the best tag team matches we have seen this far in this company, in this universe mode so far. Here we go, folks. Harlem Heat, Steiner Brothers getting ready for action. Main event time. Here we go. Lock up here. You got Booker T and Scott Steiner. Oh, looking to start us off. 
They went face to face in the locker room at the beginning of the show. And now we see that military press from Scott Steiner, man. Look at the strength of Scott Steiner. Boy, that is not a light individual as Booker T. And now we see a pump handle slam from Scott Steiner as well. Boy, he is bringing his A game as he said he would earlier in the show when he was going toe to toe with Booker T. Boy, he is backing up every word that he said earlier tonight. And Booker T is dazed and confused on the outside. And now what is Scott Steiner, man? Look at the strength once again. Power slam by Scott Steiner. Booker T better figure something out, and he better figure it out quick because Scott Steiner does not look to be letting up, not even for a second. And there he goes with a very quick knee, able to catch Scott Steiner off guard. And there is a float over DDT. Bringing it back in the ring, does Booker T. Looks like he has caught his bearings, and we are back in the ring. And Scott Steiner back on the attack. We see another military press from Scott Steiner. Oh, the strength of the Steiners is just undeniable. Pound for pound, got to be the strongest guys in WCW. And here's our early cover. Booker T able to kick out before he even gets to a one. Stevie Ray was there to break it up, and here we go. Just a fury of punches from Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner bringing it in the corner on Booker T able to counter, getting out of that hold, looking to tag in Rick Steiner, but Booker T able to cut it off. Oh, and here we go, a DDT from Booker T. That is vintage Booker T. Oh, and just sitting on the arm, leg drop across the elbow. Looking to hyper extend the elbow of, of Scott Steiner. Booker T, Irish whipped into those ropes. Oh, and a belly to belly suplex. Another cover from Scott Steiner. One, no, just a one count. Booker T is not even gonna allow the, the ref to get the hand down for two. And Scott Steiner is distracted with Stevie Ray. What in the hell is Scott Steiner doing? Oh, oh and a backdrop across the apron boy and that is one of the hardest parts of the ring that side apron there oh my gosh that is the hardest part of the ring and now Booker T looking to one up Scott Steiner oh and Scott Steiner able to break it up before he connects with that backbreaker on Rick Steiner boy that would have been very very that would have been very very hard to watch folks another backdrop on that part of the apron on that part of the mat is just very very brutal on the back and what is Scott Steiner thinking? Got the arms hooked. Oh, and another power slam from Scott Steiner. Boy, he is bringing the fight to Booker T. Just showing the feats of strength that he possesses. And now we see Rick Steiner, the more, the more uh, excited one of the of the two. Boy, Rick Steiner gets amped up in a hurry. And he is one explosive competitor as well. Do not deny the speed of Rick Steiner. Looking, oh, and looking for a backbreaker there, but no. Able to break it is Rick Steiner into a bulldog. Oh, an elbow right across the chest of Booker T. And boy, Booker T has taken a beating. And it shows he's out of it on the outside. Oh, and they go after Stevie Ray once again. And, Rick, and Scott Steiner looking to go up to the top rope. He is aiming. Oh, is he going to go for Booker T? He is. He is going to go after Booker T. And a flying drop kick. Holy cow, what a flying missile drop kick there from Scott Steiner. Lifts him up from the ground. Running power slam from Scott Steiner. Good grief, what a move. What a move. And now just picks him up like a ragdoll once again and slams him once again on the outside. Booker T is dazed and he has no idea where in the world he's at. And now Scott Steiner grabbing the back of Booker T into the, the side railing on the outside. And these fans are excited to see Scott Steiner unleashing this fury of pain onto Booker T. And oh my gosh, out of the gates, the Steiners are completely in control. And now we might see that backdrop on the on the side of the apron again. And we do. And and Stevie Ray and Booker T 
they don't have any answers tonight, folks. They are just out, out of energy and stamina. I don't know what's going on with the Harlem Heat, but boy, they better get something going quick. Because Scott Steiner and Rick Steiner are absolutely in control, and they do not look to be letting up anytime soon. But rise, I say something. Booker T able to hit Scott Steiner with that spike pile driver onto the outside. My gosh. And now Booker T might have figured something out. Might have figured out a strategy, and it'd be very smart to buy some time here. Referee looking to get Scott Steiner back in the ring, and Booker T going after Rick Steiner. Oh, man, I think he was thinking of Harlem sidekick there. Scott Steiner strategically able to cut it off, and Booker T throws Scott Steiner in the corner, and we see a diving splash out in that corner, and now he's looking for a cover. Thinks he has an advantage. No, not even a one count. Rick Steiner able to get there before a one count is even exposed. Boy, and you know, oh, the outsiders got to be watching this match, and they just got to be thinking in their head, man, both, both teams are very, very, very tough to beat in their own ways. You got the strength and the speed of the Steiners and just the speed of the Harlem Heat. It's very hard to match here in a tag team matchup. And Booker T looking to, I think Booker T has found his groove now and he is countering everything. Scott Steiner throws at him now. We see another splash in the corner and now, oh, a smart move to go after the legs of Scott Steiner. If you cut off the low base of someone Steiner's, with Steiner's build, that's a very smart move. Take away a lot of that power and explosiveness that Scott Steiner possesses. And here we go, we might see a tag -a. And we do tag for Stevie Ray. Oh, and he gives a kick to the gut to Scott Steiner. And the big man Stevie Ray in control that inverted DDT. And now he looking to cover here, looking to get an early win. Two, and now Scott Steiner kicking out just in time. And just as you think, Scott Steiner is now in deep, deep trouble as the Harlem Heat have found something here. They got something going now. And Booker T able to throw in a shot there to Scott Steiner, but cutting off that Harlem sidekick to Scott Steiner with a little STO action there. And what is he thinking here? Suplex. Oh, spike suplex onto the mat. Holy cow, what a move. One, two, and no. Covered him in the wrong corner. Booker T able to get there at the two count. Thinking to go up top, but immediately, immediately rethinking that one. And we see Rick Steiner back in. We haven't seen much of Rick Steiner yet. And boy, he ran right into went right into that kick from Stevie Ray. Golly, what a kick. And Rick Steiner getting underneath the big man. Oh, and a kick there from Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner, Irish whip into that, that back corner. And what is Rick Steiner thinking here? Stevie Ray able to block it off. And we see another splash from the Harlem Heat. We've seen three of those so far between the two. And now Booker T's back in. Maybe not a smart move by Stevie Ray there to tag his brother back in. And Booker T just runs into that flying clothesline. And then Stevie Ray's flung in like a rag doll. The Steiners are back in control, folks. We will be right back. Two weeks, we will have our first pay-per-view here in WCW Universe Mode. It is Spring Stampede. These superstars will collide for the belts here in Charlotte, North Carolina in the Independence Arena, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You do not want to miss it, folks. It is Spring Stampede. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back here in this tag team matchup for the number one contender spot in the Harlem Heat. Have found their groove once again. Back in control. Back on the arm of Scott Steiner. What a move from Booker T. And the tag team maneuvers from the Harlem Heat are definitely paying a price here. Oh, we see the Harlem hangover. Harlem hangover from Booker T. Holy cow, what a move. Oh, and Rick Steiner able 
to break it up. That might have been it if Rick Steiner was not there to break up that count. And we see a Harlem sidekick to Rick Steiner. And Booker T is kicking ass and taking names, folks. Swing of events here. The Steiners are now in deep trouble. If Booker T could land maybe a, a scissors kick here, that might do it as Rick Steiner is down. And he is out after that sidekick from Booker T. Scott Steiner showing resiliency, though. And slingshots Booker T into the ropes. Well, just in the nick of time when he thought Booker T had this match in control, Scott Steiner cuts it off immediately. And now we see the pose from Scott Steiner showing off those pythons he has. Boy, Booker T and Scott Steiner, what a rivalry this has been in WCW this far. And this is definitely far from the end. But Rick Steiner is not the legal man here. Booker T might need to focus his attention on Scott Steiner. Would be a smart strategic move to focus on the legal man. And here we go, these two lock back up. Oh, what a, what a flying forearm from Booker T. Just thinking one move ahead of Scott Steiner and we see the spin of Rooney. Booker T needs to settle down on the trash talk and focus on the match. It might come back to haunt him in the end. Oh, what a kick to the gut. And another. Oh, and finishes it off with a clothesline. Well, he's just intimidating. Scott Steiner now just, just doing whatever he wants to Scott Steiner now. And Stevie Ray might come in and clean up the mess. Oh, and a, Sar a Harlem sidekick. Another one from both Booker T or Stevie Ray. We've seen so many this far in this match. Boy, that Harlem sidekick can happen in just a nick of a second. Can just happen in just a split second to throw anybody off. And once again, the Harlem Heat are celebrating, and it is too early to showboat here, folks. Turn your attention to the match. This is the number one contenders match. This is not the time to be celebrating, but it does not matter. We see that pedigree maneuver from Stevie Ray. My goodness, just out of nowhere. One, two, no. Scott Steiner there just in time. And boy, that came out of nowhere. Rick Steiner able to counter whatever Stevie Ray had playing there with the Enziguri. Rick Steiner, what is he thinking here? And cut off just in time by Stevie Ray. And now we see the military press. Look at the strength of Stevie Ray. Thinking another cover, but Scott Steiner not even allowing the one count. Oh, and we see that pedigree maneuver again from Stevie Ray. What another pedigree there from Stevie Ray. Boy, and Rick Steiner, he might be out for the count, folks. He is not moved. He is not moved at all. And Stevie Ray, he might need to hurry up and make that cover before it's too late. Well, if he can get up and make that cover, that would have possibly thrown, thrown in the towel for the Steiners. But, well, I don't know what Stevie Ray's thinking here. He's killing a lot of time and it's really hurting the Harlem Heat here giving time for Rick and Scott Steiner to get some rest he needs to make a move but he looks dazed Booker, uh, Stevie Ray does not even know where he's at Rick Steiner able to recover and what is he thinking here is he thinking Bulldog he is and there's that middle rope, middle rope Bulldog from Rick Steiner vintage Rick Steiner to Booker T able to break it up at two. My gosh, what a tag team match this has been this far. These two tag teams are just beating the hell out of each other, folks. Boy, number one contendership spot on the line. Anything, anything can happen, folks. And we see that belly to belly from, from Rick Steiner again. And he is getting amped up, folks. That is not a very good sign for the Harlem Heat. And here's Booker T maybe to revive the Harlem Heat here. Oh, and here we go, folks. Here is, oh, what a move. There is the scissors kick from Booker T. My gosh, Rick Steiner did not even see that coming, but Scott Steiner luckily there to break up the count. That, folks, that would have been it if Scott Steiner was not there to recover and break up that pinfall. That was it, folks. That had every, that had, that was the writing on the wall for the Steiner brothers. But Scott Steiner saves. Rick Steiner, but boy, Booker T with a very hard punch there to the head of Rick Steiner. 
Boy, this tag team match is just flip momentum back and forth, but neither team can really gain an advantage. Early on, we saw the Steiners with an advantage, but here we go, Booker T staring down Scott Steiner. Blow to Scott Steiner, and uh-oh, Booker T. Drop kick onto Scott Steiner on the outside. That might have been what the Harlem Heat needed, taking out the fresh Scott Steiner on the outside. Very, very wise maneuver by Booker T. Turn his attention back to Rick Steiner, the legal man in this matchup for the Steiner brothers. Oh, what a stiff chop there. But Rick Steiner able to cut off whatever Booker T was thinking next. Oh, and we see a hard press slam onto the outside. And Rick Steiner, man, they better get in the ring before the referee counts them both out. And we see a draw. Don't know how the Bischoff would make the outcome of who the number one contender is. We might not even have a number one contender if this thing ends in a draw. Booker T is dazed and confused. He does not know where he's at, folks. That press slam to the outside really took it out of Booker T. And, folks, that is it. The Rick, Rick Steiner and Scott Steiner are the number one contenders here for the WCW Tag Team Championships at Spring Stampede via countout. Not the way you wanted this match to end, but Booker T not able to get back in time. But, boy, the Harlem Heat were looking in control. But just one small move. Really, really took it out of Booker T, and he is not able to recover. And the Steiner brothers are able to be the number one contenders and pick up the win here. Boy, what a victory. Oh, wait a minute. There's the champ right there. Oh, my gosh. NWO once again, the outsiders outsmarting the competition, and they are just laying waste to the Steiner brothers right now. Gosh. God almighty. These fans are not happy at all. The NWO in control once again, always outthinking the rest. Boy, the champs look fresh and they look ready to go for Spring Stampede. We, are, we will be back next week, folks, for Nitro.